Good morning. Uh, this morning I'd like to share some ideas with you about making your grazing charts more meaningful. My grazing chart lives on the bathroom door, so it's first port of call uh, for me every morning, and also the other members of my team, my family, and it tells us where I am, where the animals are, where everybody is and what's happening on the farm, as well as all those other important things, which is what I really want to share today. So. As per usual with the grazing child, we've got the paddocks, we've got the months, we've got all those features that are standard to uh, the grazing planning process as outlined in the handbooks. But a couple of features that I've found to be really useful on the grazing chart. Um, and the first one I'd like to start off with is, is birthdays. Um, birthdays, wedding anniversaries, all of those key social uh, dates that we often forget about and often are impacted by our management on the farm. Um, putting them on your grazing chart so you can then plan your activities around the farm, plan the animal activities, so that if you want to be away for your birthday or to celebrate a, an event, family event, uh, it's not a big deal. You can do it. So that's one of the key points is, is starting to put down all those uh, key social dates on your grazing chart, as well as when you're going to carve and when you're going to wean and when you're going to share, etc., etc., all those management concerns. Another thing I'd like to share with you is uh, this property here. We water all our stock from streams and uh, as part of my vision for the property is to have clear running streams year round. A great way of monitoring that is I've listed all the streams on the grazing chart here. They each have a row and when the stream is flowing strongly and there's enough water for the stock I mark that with a solid blue line. As the stream flow becomes intermittent, it becomes a dotted line, and the more intermittent it becomes, the bigger the spacing. So back here in December, we virtually had no streams flowing. We just had two which had um, water holes in them, and that was the only water we had available for our stock. So my vision is as we start improving things using the tools, um, we should start seeing these solid blue lines extend. But also it's a great planning tool so you can say to yourself, well, you know, if you're going into a bit of a dry patch, these are the paddocks that you want to graze first because you know now when the water is going to be short in various paddocks. So that's been a really useful addition to the grazing planning. Uh, rainfall down here, uh, just about all farmers I think have rainfall records and most of them keep them on a separate chart and really it's just a list of figures and it's difficult to actually... Uh, make good meaning of those figures without looking at everything else that's happening on the property. So uh, what we do here is is on the day the rainfall falls I put in uh, market graphically each of the rows here are 10 mils and so on this date here which was February February the 12th we had 121 mils uh, sorry yep, 121 mils on that day but it gives you a really good picture of when those big rainfall events happened and where the animals were, which paddocks, etc, etc. So if you uh, possibly down the track got some thistles or uh, some evasive type weeds coming in and you could go back and say, well actually when we got that really heavy rainfall, that's the paddock they were in and possibly it got a bit of compaction or got a bit of pugging or whatever. Um, so again, it allows you that record. I've also started tracking, uh, you'll see these two lines here. The yellow line, this one here, is our average rainfall per month. And again, I don't like dealing in average rainfalls, but it's just an indicator. So we've got our average rainfall, and then our actual rainfall, I plot in pink. So this last February, we had four times our normal rainfall for the farm. So it just gives us this picture as things chop and change, and will how it will affect our planning. Another big uh, thing that I find a lot of use of in terms of uh, the grazing chart is I've made a couple of additions down the bottom of the chart here. I feel, you know, generally farmers are fairly observant and they go out in the paddock and they see various things uh, when they're out there all day. Um, but we have no way of collecting that data and correlating it to the activities of the farm. So what I've started doing down the bottom here is for the pasture species, uh, various different pastures when they're in flower and when they're in seed and I'll just mark it on the chart so some species come into seed and flower several times in a year others are very specific 
and if I can start marking when those events happen, uh, it'll allow me for management purposes, you know, if I want animals to graze certain plants and transfer those seeds to other paddocks, it'll help with the planning of that. If I can start getting a better picture of when those plants are in flower, when they're in seed. Uh, weeds, again, um, just starting to track when different types of weeds come into seed, come into flower and germinate. And hopefully we start seeing a pattern which then allows me to plan better by saying, well, we don't want to graze that paddock at that time because there's a good chance that the animals will ingest seed and transfer them across. Or we might want to get in there before the seed set and trample and use animal impact to trample the plants down and create that change we're after. I've also started mapping insects and uh, particularly beneficials like dung beetles and when they become really active. And I just use a shaded line there. And also problem insects and for our country here particularly buffalo fly. So uh, December, January we had a bit of an outbreak of buffalo fly but we really got hammered again back here at the end of March and April. And again this is going to allow uh, me to help with my planning because buffalo fly tend to hang around on the higher ground so we can graze different areas. We certainly want to be in places which has a lot of uh, shrubs and vegetation because the animals shelter in that away from the fly. But also it can help me in future with treatment. So if I want to get out an organic back rubber or something, I know I have to have it before this date and we can make management more structured and, and more likely to happen. So it'll help with the management side. There are a lot of other things we see out in the paddock. Uh, certain trees coming to flower, certain trees coming to, into, into leaf. I started planning, uh, plotting when I see the first black snake every year. Um, we used to have a, a, a big uh, dingo that we'd see in certain paddocks. And I started plotting every time we saw that. Was that dingo on some kind of circuit and was it coming back? Because it, generally it was in three paddocks. Okay, 18, 15 and 14. And that's when we used to see it. It would help management if we didn't have our cows and calves in those paddocks when we expect that dog, if we can pick up a pattern to its movements. So small things like that, just allow, put it on the chart, allow us to incorporate it into management. Whereas if we just leave it in our head, rattling around there with everything else that's going on the farm, we tend to forget it and we don't use it as, a, as an advantage, as a lever in management. Um, I think that's more or less all I wanted to share with you today, but it's about getting this wonderful chart and making it more useful and you know, the beauty of it is we can go back, just remove the clips, and here's your record. You know, virtually two charts a year for a growing season and a non-growing season, going back 10 years. And it's so easy to go back and see what you were doing, where the animals were, what was happening out in the paddock, just by flicking through the charts. So, you know, the process of planning your grazing as laid out by the aid is fantastic, but here's some tips and ideas to make that grazing chart even more personable and more useful for you, and particularly when you're working as a team. You know, having this on the table, on the bathroom door, allows everybody to communicate around what's happening on the farm. Thank you so much for listening.